This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2044, What Being Knocked Up During a Pandemic Taught Me About Presence, by Kat Medina of katmedina.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Friday and welcome to the podcast where I simply read blogs to you for free, covering personal growth and self-help topics like mindfulness, minimalism, self-care, happiness, and a lot more. If you like this show, I'd greatly appreciate you sharing it with someone and getting them to subscribe. It goes a really long way to keep all of this going. And it really means a lot. Always makes my day to hear about people sharing it or see people sharing it online, so thank you for that. And now let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. What Being Knocked Up During a Pandemic Taught Me About Presence by Kat Medina of katmedina.com. Last week, I kicked off my eighth month of pregnancy, and as I stood sideways in front of the mirror, scoping out my growing bump, I couldn't help but trip out. Just under two months until everything changes forever. Once the baby creeps out of the depths of my lady bits, life will no longer be an individual pursuit. I'll be eternally connected to another soul, one that I happen to grow in my body like a crazy sea monkey's experiment. Being knocked up during a pandemic has been interesting. Because of my history with infertility and multiple miscarriages, my doctors advised me to be incredibly cautious during this time, aka hunker down in isolation with baby daddy and my giant doggo named Donut. In a time that is usually celebrated with baby showers or random old ladies gushing as they place spindly fingers atop your enlarged belly, my experience felt a bit more subdued. People are scared to approach strangers during COVID, and most would not dare acknowledge a potential pregnancy when it could actually just be a little extra pandemic pudge that's gotten out of control with the switch to business casual sweatpants and couch snacks between Zooms. The first public attention I got while pregnant was at the dentist's office at seven months, mostly because I wasn't able to get x-rays, and yet my left feeling seen and excited. My husband and I have been taking virtual childbirth classes offered through our hospital, and are learning how to swaddle from illustrated diagrams instead of practicing wrapping up a fake baby with creepy eyes like a burrito. The realities of birth during COVID have been surprising. Masks will be required during labor and delivery, and only one support person is allowed in the hospital. I'm not too shocked by this, though. If there is one thing years of infertility taught me, it's that things rarely go as planned with pregnancy and children best to disregard expectations and just go with the flow if you want to retain any chance of happiness. I've surprised myself with how much I love being pregnant. For years, I wasn't even sure I wanted kids and had a running pros and cons list. The pros eventually won. As much as I want to meet the little dude, I really want everything to slow down so that I can continue to enjoy this special time in my life. I love that my body is changing to accommodate my first child and that it is the physical representation of how I define femininity, strength, courage, love, generosity, joy, and open-heartedness. I've always been independent and have never been scared to be alone. As much as I love spending time with people, I equally enjoy my own company and the feeling of solitude it provides. It's rarely felt like loneliness to me which could be why I never hesitated to go on solo trips when I felt the calling to travel. This is the first time in my life that my unique and individual human experience has been shared. I have a hitchhiker in my uterus who reminds me they're right here with me with every karate chop and Bruce Lee impersonation. It's surprisingly comforting and feels like I have a built-in confidant and co-conspirator. It's like we have an ongoing inside joke that no one else understands. Life is just he and I know it. Whenever I start to feel overwhelmed with how quickly the due date is approaching, I try to get back to the present moment. I have a bad habit of stressing out about stressing out in the future, and it has never been helpful. Yes, I have a large to-do list of everything I need to get done before it hits the exhaustion fan, but worrying typically doesn't boost productivity for me. Being self-employed, maternity leave isn't really an option for me unless I want to risk my business going under. Work doesn't stop just because you push a person out of your crotch. We have several clients who are depending on us to continue to service them and meet important midsummer deadlines. With a May 5th uterine eviction notice in place, this will likely be pretty challenging. Considering we are a two-person team, my husband and I will be adding new hats to our ever-growing collection, milk machine and diaper dude. Occasionally, I accept the invitation for the shitty pity party thrown by and for myself 
And although it can feel briefly satisfying, it usually doesn't take long for me to realize the appetizers are stale and it's time for me to unassumingly sneak out the door before the pinata drops. I know from experience that when things don't go the way I want them to, they always lead to something greater in my life with time. A lesson, a change in the trajectory of the path I'm on, or a hidden opportunity is always just beneath the surface. The limited time off post baby is happening for me. I just can't quite see why yet, so I need to trust in life and do my best to enjoy the journey just as it is. If I get anxious, I know that I'm living in the future and time traveling like that just makes the days go by faster. Breathing deeply, putting my hands on my belly, and feeling my son move brings me back to the now. All is well. Everything is exactly as it should be. And because of this, I might as well appreciate and enjoy the moment exactly as it is, since being gratefully present is what it's all about. You just listened to the post titled, What Being Knocked Up During a Pandemic Taught Me About Presence by Kat Medina of katmedina.com. A unique one from Kat today, wishing her all the best. I actually haven't seen an update on her blog since before the due date, so hoping everything went well. Come by katmedina.com to check out her site and show her support. But I'll keep this ending short for the Friday episode. Have a great start to your weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.